Hey, what's up? Uh, back with another video, and today I'm gonna be starting a project that I pretty much started like years ago, but like picking back up on it now. But uh, that is, uh... oh, I'll just show you. So in the SA, here is my gauge cluster. And uh, well, it's missing a couple gauges that the later uh, Series 2 and Series 3 had. That is uh, oil gauges and things like that. So to remedy that, or I guess uh, add on to it, I installed these gauges, which tell me things and such. That's something that's a little interesting about a uh, Series 2 RX-8s versus Series 1s, is they're also missing oil gauges. Uh, I, I don't know exactly why Mazda took the oil gauges out. Uh, I mean, in the Series 1, they're pretty, pretty useless. They don't really tell you much. Like the, uh, the oil gauge is just a dummy gauge. So they just got rid of that. But uh, there's not really a whole lot of aftermarket support for uh, installing gauges in a uh, Series 2 versus Series 1. So uh, because of that, here's what I got to work with. Now, originally this was meant for the other car, the uh, Arc Shade that's in storage, the uh, Series 2 slash Series 1 swap project thing that I completely ditched because I got the, the R3. But here is a low-tech gauge pod for a Series 1 RX-8. Now, over here I have a uh, Series 2 center console top thing that I pulled from the uh, Junkyard Series 2 that was in Texas and uh, well, modified it a little bit. But if you look at these, the way this is uh, designed, you should be seeing a picture of an installed one right now. But uh, if you look, it's all like fanned out and stuff like that. And it does not match up with this at all. So what, uh, what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do, which I start on is uh, obviously cut out the center of this little piece. I also took this and used it as a template to uh, mark out, I don't know if you can see that, mark out lines where I'm gonna cut and uh, modify this to fit in a uh, series two. Now the gauges I'm going to be installing are uh, water temp, oil temp, and oil pressure. Um, these are, are just the ones I like to monitor. Uh, in this car I also have one extra gauge which is in the cluster for AFR. Uh, I'm not fully finished installing that. I still have to uh, weld the bung into the, uh, into the mid pipe. Then that'll actually be useful. But yeah, those are the four gauges I have in this car. And uh, while I'm not really too worried or concerned about like uh, what's going on inside of my engine, uh, Series 2 RX-8s tend to take care of themselves very well. But just for peace of mind, I like to be able to see what's going on inside of my engine. And uh, this is a good way to do it. Uh, it's just a little bit more difficult and you have to modify more stuff to do so because, again, there's not really much aftermarket support for the Series 2 because there weren't really that many of them sold. Um, let's see, I think it was a 2004 model year that pretty much everybody bought RX-8s and then, well, the shit show began from there and nobody wanted to buy them after that. <laughs> but uh, I'm also doing the uh, center console thing uh, just because I like the position of it. Now you could easily just do a uh, a pillar pod, but I absolutely hate that because of how in their face they are 100% of the time. Versus over here, where you just glance over a little bit, and it's just right below your uh, your level of vision and whatnot. Uh, just it's just better that way, I think. So it's worth it to modify this way versus the a pillar pod, which I also think is much more ricey to do a pillar pod. But some people prefer that, and you can skip this step all together if you wanted to do that. Um, I just don't agree with it at all. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut around the lines. I'm not going to cut right on the lines because I want a little bit more material to work with. So in case uh, you know, I need to trim something a little bit more or I don't have enough room to do whatever on another side, then I can... Uh, I can work with that better and uh, fit it the way I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into doing that now. And uh, another thing I wanted to touch on really quick, um, you can cut this however you want or make it fit however you want. 
Uh, see for this this application, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, cut this so the uh, gauge pod ends right here at this uh, top line. Now, normally it would just hang right over this this area right here, but uh, I think that's gonna interfere with the view of the screen down there. I could probably cut this lip off, but I I think it'll look a little bit cleaner with a uh, just a straight edge going all the way through here and only covering this this little piece right here. Um, see the tool that I'm gonna be using is I think this is a Harbor Freight uh, Dremel thingy. And then some diamond, uh, they're diamond cutting bits or something, whatever. Uh, I think this is like a ten or fifteen dollar kit, and whatever this tip's called. Yeah, this uh, locking tip. Got all this shit from Lowe's, um, with the exception of the Dremel, which is from Hyper Freight. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, when you're doing this, just be careful. Uh, probably better to do this without the gauges installed. But, uh, you know, have them installed and they're siliconed in place. So, I'm just going to do it with. So, now let's get to it. So this is where I'm at so far, and you know, as you can see, there's quite a bit of meat left around the, uh, the edges. Now, uh, this is obviously just a rough cut. Um, let's see, the lines I marked looked like they were uh, pretty much rubbed off all the way around. I can't really see them anymore. So I think what I'm going to do from here is uh, probably add some masking tape just around the edges and then remark my line so I have clear, visible lines. But, uh, let's see, I'm not too confident in in the line all the way around. I know this line going all the way around is good, but I don't know if I got this one lined up perfectly. So I'm going to do kind of the same thing I did before, just take off most of the meat, but not get quite to the line itself. So, uh, yeah, just going to take my time and uh, be careful and you know, try not to get smaller than this thing. Okay, so I think I'm gonna just go ahead and call this a stopping point for tonight. Um, I don't have a black sharpie or anything I can mark a solid clear line with. I mean, I tried with this pink sharpie and that worked to get like some idea where the line should be, but tried a black pen and uh, that started to make a decent line, but still can't see very well. And uh, also kind of ran out of ink like halfway through. So uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go ahead and get a Sharpie and uh, continue probably tomorrow night after I get off work and uh, see if I can get this, get a nice clean edge and stuff. Okay, so I got a Sharpie and uh, marked a fairly clear line where I want to cut. Uh, this bottom part I didn't get so well, uh, just because of uh, all these little clips on the bottom. But um, that's something I can work on after I get all this done. Uh, but again, I'm just going to keep trying to work down until I get pretty much touching that edge. Then I can, you know, adjust it and fine tune it and stuff like that to make it look good. And then afterwards, uh, work on this part. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So, again, uh, still just a rough cut. Um, obviously, I'm not going to cut like exactly on the line. You can see some of the line here and whatnot, but it's pretty much almost the exact shape of the piece. And of course, there's still a bunch of meat left down here. 
But um, instead of using the Dremel to like kind of sand it down quicker or whatever, I'm just gonna take some sandpaper and just uh, just make it nice and clean edge and whatnot. And then I'll try to get a better line down here and then cut that and then do the same from there. But uh, so far, so good. And here's the top of it. The edge looks a lot cleaner up here than on the other side. But uh, it's still rough in some places, not perfect, obviously. Anyway, I'm gonna get that line marked up and you know, continue cutting down here and Let's see if I have any sandpaper here, because I don't know if I do. Okay. Okay, so I've got that little bit of meat cut off. There's still some left. Uh, again, just to give me a little bit to work with. Um, I think what I might be able to go ahead and do now is uh, take this tape off and uh, you know start JB welding it into place. Um, of course, I'll scuff up this side because it's all smooth, give it something to really stick to. But yeah, my uh, my plan is to JB weld this piece to the gauge pod. That way, it's you know completely secure. I don't have to worry about anything and whatever. Uh, I will have to get some uh, clamps in order to, you know, keep it all secure because it does like to come up in a couple places. But I think this is a good stopping point for now because I'll have to go to the store and get those clamps and then and I uh, continue from there and uh, sand all the edges down to get a nice finish. But uh, yeah, that's uh, where I'm at now. Okay, so went to Walmart, got a pack of clamps, and it uh, comes in a variety of different sizes and stuff, which should be perfectly fine. Um, also scuffed up all the way around here, uh, just to give a nice mating surface. And, well, there's perforated poles and stuff like that all around here, so that shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, I think I might scuff up a little bit. Uh, probably doesn't need it, but just for good measure, I'll do it anyway. And then uh, clamp that on there, mix up the JB Weld and do all that stuff. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I shouldn't have to show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, come back when I'm done in it. It's all like setting up and stuff. Okay, so got the goopy mess all over there. Uh, that should be enough. I'll probably put some more right there. But uh, otherwise that should be enough to hold it down and definitely won't go anywhere. Um, let's see, the cure time for this is four hours, I guess, uh, but, you know, I'm just going to leave it overnight. can check it in the morning, and, uh, you know, if I have some time, then I'll probably work on sanding it down and uh, making it pretty and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and clamp that on now. Okay, so I think that should do it. I wasn't expecting to use this many clamps, but... Oh, I got a 16 pack. Might as well utilize as many of them as I can. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this. Um, see, all the lines or all the edges are lined up pretty well. Um, oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, a lot of goop is uh, squeezing out. But um, yeah, the uh, the main thing that I was trying to do is just get every edge sealed completely down so it's not like bowing up anywhere or anything like that and uh you know the end product should uh should look pretty damn good okay so it's the next morning just looking over this um pretty much it's it's good overall i mean this is usable just like this uh, my biggest area of concern was this front piece because it, it's the part that bowed the most but uh, looks like it bonded pretty well. Same with the sides, but on the back, it's not completely all the way down. So I think I'm gonna mix up a little bit more epoxy and uh, just get this inside edge, then clamp it down. Okay, so now that's setting up and I will come back to that when I get off work. Okay, so I think I got this to Pretty much where I want it. I guess I could finish that off a little bit better. 
but uh, not too important. Um, overall, it's uh, it's pretty decent for the shape. Um, let's see, where I, where I was talking about uh, you know this bowing and stuff like that. Um, I didn't think this far ahead. So this is gonna be there, and I think what I might do is order another one of these low tech gauge pods. And uh, when I take the piece out of uh, my dash that's in the car now, um, I'll do this exact same thing, but I will uh, do it so this comes all the way down and covers this top piece. Um, I think that'll look a lot better and you know, cover all this kind of stuff. But uh, for now, I, it'll work. It'll it'll be fine, and uh, see. Hopefully, I won't have to disassemble my entire center console thing and take the radio out and stuff, because this is just uh, you know, clipped in like that. Anyway, uh, this is this is done. So I'm going to move on to uh, sensors and wiring and stuff. Okay, so originally I was gonna make this all one video, you know, the uh, modifying the gauge pod and then the wiring, sensors, routing, and all that shit. And uh, going over the footage and video clips and stuff like that, I was gonna make a really long fucking video. So instead I'm just gonna cut this into, uh, you know, parts. And, uh, oh yeah, I guess this will just be the modifying gauge pod video or whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll show you something real quick. Okay, so here's the gauge pod with gauges fully installed, with the exception of the oil temperature gauge, just because I don't have the adapter for that yet, uh, for the sensor, but here's that. Yeah, works. Except for that. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, this will just be the uh, modifying the gauge pod to fit the S2 dash stuff. And uh, the next video or videos, so I'll have to go over the rest of the clips. But um, yeah, those will be actually installing the gauge pod and like, going over wiring, testing, and things like that. It, this might be a, hopefully a two, but uh, maybe a three. God, I hope it doesn't turn into a four part series. That, that would suck. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> but. Um, Anyway, uh, if you like this video where it's at now, uh, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe, and whatever. If you have any suggestions about anything or any tips or anything you'd like to share, feel free to leave it down in the comments or personal message me. Find me on Facebook or uh, Instagram or whatever. Uh, Instagram is at 6 zero and oh, just find me on Facebook. It's my name. It's 3 in the fucking morning now. I'm going to sleep. See ya.